Welcome, friends, to another edition of TiffinCast. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I have the honor of speaking with Daphne Chan, who is an artist and a photographer based in Vancouver, Canada. Daphne and I met through uh, Jeff Yoakum, actually, and Jeff Yoakum's specialism and uh, a Team X uh, group. And I immediately took to Daphne because of, of, of course, the way she presents herself. Uh, if you must, do take a, a short break right now. Stop the video and go to check out her website. I think you'll, your jaw will drop with the, the kind of work that she does. And, and she does this with such humility. It just boggles my mind, really. No, no, I, don't do that. <laughs> I mean it. I, it was such a pleasure to meet you in New York, finally, and to just sit down and talk to you, even for those five minutes were just so memorable. You know, you, you immediately put me at ease. You've, uh, you've, you, you know, you just sort of, it, it was almost as if we, we, we started a conversation that we'd left off some years ago, you know, and that's the <laughs> feeling I got. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself so that my, my audience will get to know you as well. Who are you and how did you start in this business? Well, I will actually go back to what I consider a very pitiful moment in my life, which uh, attracted me to photography. So if we go way back when, I essentially was a student in law school and I experienced a personal loss where my father passed away very suddenly. And if you ever needed a reminder that life was short, having a parent pass away when they're 50 mm -hmm. is a wake up call. So I thought, do I want to spend my day behind a desk in a lovely corner office one day in a downtown office? And I thought, no. So what I ended up doing was uh, I pursued photography since I was 15. You know, I was one of those dark room nerds and I decided I'm going to start a business. So in the same year, I decided to move to a new city. I met someone new. I got married, planned a wedding, got married, and I just started a business. So I thought, what's in the market? What's available? So I started doing wedding photography. And for about five years, I had a full-time uh, wedding and portrait studio. But at the same time, I had always um, been very interested in doing fine art nudes. And I started getting approached by my brides who were clients who said, oh, you know, I see the artwork you have in your studio. Is that something you would do for me? And I thought, oh no, that's just, that's just my art. That's just what I do for fun. But they said, would you consider doing it? So that's how I started a side business of doing commissioned fine art nudes, uh, initially for all my brides. Excellent. And yeah. Okay. Go on, go on. So after five years of this, I thought, I really want to push myself. I'm getting into the comfort zone. So I somehow decide it's a fantastic idea to wind down my very profitable business, sell my condo, and go to art school in New York. <laughs> So I decide to go to New York and I realize getting there that I'm starting at the very bottom again. And I didn't know what I was going to do. Again, I didn't have any contacts. Uh, I didn't have a business. And I decided I'm going to go and apply to one of the most prestigious schools called International Center of Photography. And despite my portfolio, they said, sure, we'll take you. So I spent uh, almost a year and a half concentrating purely on photography. And I had saved up enough, probably over three years, to give myself the luxury of be, just being a student and not having to work and just concentrating um, on learning my craft. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank that's, you. That's really awesome. I think very few people have that commitment, have that sense of, like, I'm going to work my tail off to really know what I need to be doing. You know, we've all heard this, you know, lots of people walk into a camera store, come out thinking they're a photographer. And we're trying to move people away from the idea that that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to actually spend some time, as you've, you have done, to really understand, you know, the medium, you know, more than anything else. So go on. I, I love the story. So uh, three weeks into moving into New York, I, I thought if I don't get accepted at the school, I at least want to be connected to them. So I essentially walked up to the front desk and said, uh, I will volunteer for anything you need done at the school. 
I'm willing to sweep your floors, essentially. So they said, actually, we, you seem to have some skills. You seem organized. You don't seem like the typical art student. So we actually need someone to help with production with um, a photographer. So they gave me the address. And one day I showed up. So I've been in New York for about three and a half weeks now. And I show up at this beautiful loft studio. The doors open and it's Lenny Kravitz. Oh, wow. And I thought, oh my goodness, am I at the wrong address? And it turns out the photographer I was going to assist was Mark Seliger, who shoots the cover of Vanity Fair magazine. Sure. Wow. So I spent uh, about a year there just before school started learning uh, the business side of, of celebrity photography, of portraiture. So that was a fantastic learning experience. And I was able to use that in my um, photography while I was in New York. Tell me again, how long was your, your, ex, your I guess, in, was it an internship with Mark Seliger or? Yes, it was definitely an internship. Sure. And uh, how long was that? I'd say in total it was about five months, four and a half, almost five months. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Wow. So at the same time, I was attending uh, photography school sure. at ICP. So I felt, you know, I had, I had asked for the most immersive learning experience and then received it. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> so while I was in New York, I really felt that I got to uh, develop an art practice. I met so many artists, so many inspiring individuals. And at the same time, I was able to explore my curiosity again about fine art nudes. But I started getting involved in the burlesque scene. So I don't know if uh, you or your listeners know what that is. But essentially, it's women who are doing um, sort of a 1950s inspired uh, dance on stage for their audience with um, usually handmade costumes. that are sort of the more innocent side of um, performative uh, dance for uh, usually a male audience, but now it's for men and women. Okay, okay. And now you, this has taken you back, uh, in, in a way, back to New York. Although you live in Vancouver, you are looking to head back to New York for some time, aren't you? That's right. So when I moved back to Vancouver, um, I decided, oh, I don't want to lose my connection to New York. So for three years, I applied for a residency. And last year, I said, guys, I really, really want to come. So what can I do to improve my application? So I essentially followed all their instructions, worked very hard on building up a new body of work. And this year, I got accepted. Excellent. So now, thank this is, you. This is with the ICP? No, this is with the New York Art Studios Residency Foundation. OK, wow. And they've given me a three-month art residency. So I'm moving there uh, in February, and I'm working full-time on this project for three months until May 31st, 2015. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Tell us a little bit more about the project itself, though. What is, what is involved? What, what exactly are you doing? I mean, it's not news, right? It's No, 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 no. So one thing that I've always been involved in is uh, even when I was in law school, was I was always act advocating and campaigning for human rights. And to me, that means human rights for all. So I was quite involved in the LGBT, which is the um, lesbian, gay, bi, and transgender community. And so the project I'm doing is called Transparency, the Gender Identity Project. Awesome. And I think my main goal with that project is to bring public awareness and really for me to celebrate that community because we have perhaps some particular ideas of what that community looks like. Sure. And for me, it's really important to give them a platform for visibility and awareness. Let me ask you this rather tough question though. Well, why you? Why, why should you be doing that? Well, I think it has to do with the fact that I also have a background in psychology and I've always been interested in gender roles and that comes through my interest in how um, there are inequalities uh, sometimes obviously between men and women. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have been born in Canada but certainly around the world 
And, you know, I had a very, very brief summer um, internship at the United Nations. That was the first time I actually lived in New York. So I thought, this is a place where things are happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. But uh, if you um, want to bring it back to specialism, when I came back to, when I came to Vancouver from New York, I again had to start all over again. And I decided I did not want to do weddings and I wanted to pursue my fine art practice. I so I... So that's when I got invited to Creative Live by Jen Rosenbaum to take her boudoir photography course. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's how I was introduced to Jeff Yoko. I indeed. Okay. Wow. The circle is complete. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, right. yeah, Jen essentially told Jeff, there's this woman coming, you have to meet her and she's going to work with you. I didn't know this at the time. Sure. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about how specialism, and, and, do, and define it for us again, uh, because I think the more number of times people hear how it's defined uh, and how it's used, I guess, uh, the better people will be in terms of accepting it. Uh, it's not specializing. It's not being a specialist, but it's called specialism. Um, you were able to go through Jeff's program, a vigorous program, for no doubt, uh, and <laughs> and being able to. <laughs> you're laughing now. I bet you weren't laughing before. No. Uh, and and tell us a little bit about why specialism played a such a real, real important role in your life in making that transition from one one genre of photography to another. So I'll tell you the way I define specialism. Uh, which may not be Jeff's exact definition. But essentially, the reason why I decided to sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with him is that often we'll look at the market, for example, the photography market, and we'll say, what's missing? And then we will look at the business side and say, let me meet that need. I feel that specialism flips that on top of its head. So instead of looking without, you look within mm -hmm. and you ask yourself, who am I fundamentally as a person? What are my values? What are the kind of people I want to have in my life? And therefore, what are the clients that I want to work with? So it was essentially, I think, a very strong base of personal development and discovering who you are. What do you most care about? Who, what things are important to you right. and, and, and shout it out. So Jeff calls it becoming a Mezilla. So instead of Godzilla, you become a very large expanded version of yourself. Sure. And that has been the turning point in my business. So let's connect to the dots a little bit. Uh, when you say you become a Mezilla, uh, what, how, how did that happen for you specifically? when it came to making that decision to going back to New York? So one of the things that I learned was my, one of my essential values, and I think you touched upon it a little, was that it, it's very important for me. Intimacy is one of my highest values. So again, when we met, I believe I asked you some rather personal and intimate questions because I just have an insatiable curiosity about people. Sure. I am genuinely is interested. Um, I think I asked you, Seishu, like, what are your dreams and what are you most interested in? And so, you know, for a lot of people that can be off-putting, but it's polarizing, right? Either you want to know more about me or you're, you're exiting stage left. That's right, by the way. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I get you. I get you, totally. Um, th this... this move to New York is, is a fascinating one for me because you're, um, the move to New York is a fascinating one for me. I feel like, uh, you know, you're pulling up the roots again and doing something again to just grow more, to grow more, you know, and it's not something most people will do, which is, which is what I think found very interesting. I was like, wow, she's got a successful business in Vancouver. Why would she leave all that and come to New York, which is a tough, tough city to live in? Um, and I applaud you for that. 
to be honest Thank with you. you. You know, it's Thank not you. it's not an easy thing to do. And I'm not trying to flatter you. I'm just trying to tell you this, that this is how I felt. I was like, wow, go girl. You know, really, because that's something <laughs> so it's amazing. It's amazing. I couldn't do it right now because I, I don't know if I had it in me to to move to the West Coast or, you know, to India or Japan or wherever. I'd love to just go out and do a project for uh, three months, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I can do it. Anyway, you have an Indiegogo fundraiser campaign that's kicking off pretty soon to basically help you transition from Vancouver to New York. Is that correct? Am I right in saying that? That's right. So the art residency, people have asked me, what does that mean? Right. What does it what mean? It, what does it mean? It means that they will give me the privilege of renting an art studio in a large building in Sunset Park in Brooklyn. So it still means I have to essentially... Um, pay, a, live, find an apartment to live in, pay for an art studio, travel to New York, pay for art supplies, buy my film, pay for processing, mm -hmm. pay for scanning. So essentially I am doing a um, Indiegogo campaign that starts on Monday, November 24th. Oh, okay. 9 a.m. hopefully, Vancouver time. <laughs> and it's to share the project. Um, about how I want to share and celebrate the LGBT and gender queer community. Excellent, excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing the kickoff of that campaign uh, on Monday, on the November twenty fourth at nine. Is it nine a.m. your nine time? Nine a.m. Yep, nine a.m. Okay. So that would be uh, noon. Noon in my time. New York time. I, I can't do math. Um, thank you so much, Daphne, for joining me. Uh, it was a pleasure getting to know. Uh, your background, uh, your your vision for the future, and definitely to hear so much about what you're doing now um, in the next couple of months in New York City. So hopefully we can meet up now that we're going to be yes, neighbors. Absolutely. You know, we got we got to connect. So I look, I'll be I'll be coming down to New York, and hopefully we'll have uh, lunch or dinner or something like that. And we'll talk more. Thank so, you so much for this opportunity, Seishu, to share the project. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for joining us. Bye. Bye.